So I'm truly sorry to have to start the video off like this, but I have some hard news to share with you all. Whilst I was working on the van yesterday, the sheep got moved into Dad and Judy's paddocks. G'day everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the van build. Today I am installing this fiberglass gas box into the external wall of my van. I wanted to first say I'm sorry for starting the video in such a distressing way but you know I felt you should be the first to know and don't worry I am going to be fighting a custody battle and in the meantime I'm going to be making full use of my visitation rights. So this fiberglass gas box I got from DIY RV Solutions. They specialize in fiberglass products for vans. They're actually based in Brisbane, but they ship Australia wide. And the reason I'm installing an external mounted gas box is because in Australia, it's actually illegal to have your gas cylinder inside without it completely isolated. So your only access is from the outside. So to meet Australian regulations, you need a sealed gas box and it will involve having to cut a huge hole in the side of my van to install it. But the good thing is it doesn't take up too much space inside. This one actually fits a four kilogram gas bottle. So that's pretty much double what I carried in my last van. And I calculate with the hot water and everything that should last me over a month really before I have to change it out. Now in Australia as well, you're not allowed to do the gas fitting yourself. You have to get a professional gas fitter to do it. So today is just gonna be installing it in the wall and making sure it's nice and watertight and they're ready for the gas fitter. So this is the location I have chosen for the gas box. And one good thing about it is, you might be able to see that on the camera, but there's a big scratch here, which I'm actually quite satisfied. I'll be cutting that whole thing out. So that's handy. I was actually trying to avoid installing the gas box and the hot water system on this driver's side of the vehicle. And the reason for that being is I want to stealth camp a lot in this van, meaning, you know, just sleep in it on the side of kind of normal streets. So when you think about it, when you're parked on the side of a street, if say a cop is driving past, this is the side of the van they're gonna see, the driver's side. So initially wanted to avoid putting the gas box and everything there because it, it's a bit of a giveaway that it is a camper. However, just with the way my layout's gone and where I'm putting my batteries and everything else, it turned out this is the spot I have to put it. So, oh well. So first thing I've done is get the internal measurements of the gas box. Now I'm gonna transfer those measurements onto here. Ideally, I want the gas box to sit flat on the floor here. So I'll be using the floor as my kind of straight edge. And I wanna go as close kind of to this pillar as I can without obviously cutting into it. So this is a very rough outline of what I'll be cutting out. God, this skylight is glorious. So I am slowly learning my lesson about covering things up whilst doing the grinding. I am really covering up any window that could be damaged by it and yeah, making sure that the sparks don't cause any further damage than they already have. I have my safety protection ready and I'm going to keep this camera at a nice distance. Let's do it. Wow. So someone in the comments, I think of a couple of videos ago when I was using the grinder last, told me to get a thinner disc. The other one did say it was for cutting metal, but I got this stainless steel thin metal one. And the difference is night and day. That cut through like butter. If anything, it cut through so quick that I made a couple of mistakes that don't matter, but wow. Get a thin blade for cutting metal. It'll save you so much so much sparks and issues.
piece of cake. So now I'm just marking out the floor line on this and I'm going to use it same as when I did the windows to drill pilot holes through and that'll get me a marker and then I'm going to measure out the box from the outside. So I just saw some movement over my shoulder and it was a big bird flying here that you don't often see that much in the country away from the ocean. Look what just landed in our dam. He looks pretty content. I'll leave him to it. So now that the bottom hole is marked, I'm gonna use the hole in combination with a straight edge and a measuring tape to get my cutout dimensions. Because the van isn't exactly level, I'm gonna use the lines of the van to make sure the cutout is actually square. All right, so the hole is marked. I measured it twice, thrice, a hundred times. My measuring tape and my square seem to be out by about half a centimeter to each other. So I am gonna say this one has a little bit more play allowed. So fingers crossed, I get this the right the first time. I have to say, I'm a little bit nervous about this one. was nerve-wracking. He... Okay, there's nothing else for it. Everyone, this is the time. I'd hate to do it to you again, but pause the video now. Is it gonna fit the first time? Give you 10 seconds. And I really won't be offended if you have less faith in me this time. Here goes. So it definitely fits, but the inner flange, I think this is stopping it touching yet. So I don't know whether it fits nicely at the moment or whether I've aimed it. We'll see soon. Let's have a look from the other side. All right, so you're gonna be seeing this with me. Fingers crossed. Yeah. So I'm not gonna be able to tell how close it is until I cut more away from the outside because at the moment it can't really sit flush at all. Guess we're gonna to have to wait and see. So DIY RV Solution sells a sprinter specific gas box that goes along with the contours of the sprinter. It looks really good when it sits flush. For the Iveco though, because it's a less common camper van, they don't have a Iveco specific one. So what they give you is this, which I've got. They call it the universal gas box because see, this is how it's currently sitting, but now it's up to me to score out this side to the right shape of this so it sits nice and flush. But first, doing that grinding just put a lot of metal shards everywhere. So I'm gonna make sure I give the van panels a good clean because if you let those hot metal bits stay on the van, it'll wreck your paint. A few of you will remember this tool for getting the contoured lines. I use this on the roof, but essentially the box is sitting flat on the floor inside. So now I need to be able to stencil it out so I can cut out this fiberglass wall and try and match these contours. It's gonna be hard to do exactly, but I'm gonna do the best I can. I've given myself a little bit of wiggle room with depth because you know, you don't want to cut it too short and then I'll be buggered. Probably also a good time to check the boxes in the right way up. Now, as you can see, that gave me a really nice outline to go off. 
He goes all the way around. The tricky part is now going to be cutting this accurately with a jigsaw whilst holding it still. But before I start to jigsaw, I'm gonna quickly burr these metal edges and give it some treatment with rust proof paint so it'll dry whilst I'm jigsawing. So the tribe has spoken. The sheep have come back to me. They're right on the other side of the fence. I think it's clear where they want to be. I have to say I am not on track for getting this done today. I didn't start till midday. Once again, it's going into tomorrow, I think. The jigsaw is not really cutting the nicest line in it. It's kind of chipping it up a bit. But this is my best blade. Not sure what else to do. What a momento. Let's try this. Much slower, but much nicer. This little multi-tool works so much better. The jigsaw was chipping away at it, whereas this is such a smoother cut. Look how clean that is. I would say straight away, a lesson that I've learned from is do the bottom side first because it's gonna be the one least visible and you can really practice on it. I am probably covered in fiberglass and I realize a little bit late, but definitely use a mask while you're cutting that because it goes everywhere. I have to say the smell at the moment though, really brought me straight to surfing and made me just want to get back out in the water. It's been too long. All right, so the moment of truth. I realized it was actually a bit presumptuous of me before to do the rust coat of paint because if this hole for this isn't big enough yet, I'm gonna to have to cut out more. Now, I'm not expecting to get this perfect first go, but this is more to see whether it fits. Tell you what, she's not bad. There's a little bit too much gap here and kind of up here too. Actually kind of everywhere. I reckon if I just take a little bit off more about this one and that's really gonna let it sit flat, I think. Not bad for a first attempt. So it's definitely good, but I don't like how far it sits out. I think I kind of went too safe. Now I'm gonna push it and cut it all again because I wanna get it much closer. We'll see how that decision turns out. Good morning everyone. It was a bloody freezing one this morning and has made me think that I'm gonna fast forward installing my diesel heater to the next one of the next few projects. But I did stay up into the dark doing manipulations on the gas box last night, trying to get it lower profile. In the end, I was able to achieve a lower profile. I did make a few little mistakes. I'll show you it now. So hopefully you can notice that the gas box sits a bit more flush now with the van wall, the mistakes I made 
is here. I checked out too much and I think I did the same on the other side, but I'm pretty confident Sikaflex is gonna fix that. And my actual plan for this box as well is I'm gonna plasti dip from there across to there in black so it really sits nicely with the van. I'll show you that in the next episode. And I realized for all of you that voted, I never really showed you what the inside looked like. The answer is I did not need to cut a second hole. The first hole is definitely gonna work, you know, if I could do it again, I would make it slightly smaller. So in a way, maybe I did kind of aim at it, but this is what it looks like. And remember from the inside, I'm just really gonna cover the interior part with Sikaflex to get that nice and waterproof. So that's where it meets the inside. There's a little bit bigger gap at the top than I would have liked. As I said, I cut it a little bit long and then it goes down there. So all those gaps will just be filled with Sika. Before I can put the box in, I need to attach the lid. So this is the hinge. It's just gonna sit like this, and then the door will attach to it. So now I'm pre-drilling the holes for the gas box lid hinge. So now I'm gonna mark the holes on the underside using this as a guide. Now I'm just going to put some sicker on for some extra strength. All right, so that door hinge went on lovely and it's sitting there nicely in place. And now I know it's counterintuitive, but this door actually sits on the hinge like this because it's the hinge is made of rubber and it will press down and the lock will hold it in place. So now I'm just gonna repeat the same process for attaching the door. It may have taken me a couple of goes, but we now have an opening and closing door. So now I've got to figure out how high to sit this lock barrel. Bloody beautiful, mate. Wouldn't want to stuff anything up at this point, would you? Okay, so now I've got my hole saw bit. This one's 19 mil. It looks like it should be fine on the end there. Very nice. I have to say, I think that looks pretty good. I am all ready to put it in. It is time for the fully sicker party, mate. They say it's all about the prep. A mate of mine told me if you do this double tape approach where you make a bit of a channel, it's what gives it the professional finish apparently. So we'll see about that. So I've finished the back side of it and it is not pretty, but I've just gone heavy with the sicker there because I really want it airtight. That goes all the way around, around the bottom as well. And the back there was definitely the fun side because it didn't need to look pretty at all. The front has to be a different story.
I tell you what, so happy I did the tape trick because there was so much excess Sikaflex there that came off on the tape and it is super neat now. Now I'm just gonna give it the good old wet finger technique. That, that also sounds wrong, but I'm also gonna, now I'm gonna clean it up. You know what I mean. I'll clean it up and it'll look really good. And it is done. What a mission that turned out to be. I definitely made it a bit more complicated than it should have, but it was also a bigger job than I thought as per usual. I'm really happy with the way it came up. I'm happy with the way the door closes. I'm now gonna leave it to set for a couple of days and not move the van at all. Once it's set, it is gonna be rock solid. You probably saw, but I also put the, the box on a bed of Sikaflex, so that isn't going anywhere. Some lessons I learned. Actually, let's do this outside. It's lovely out there. Some lessons I learned from installing the gas box, I would say for starters, definitely get that thin blade for cutting metal with your grinder. That tape technique kicks ass. It saves a lot of mess. And really just think things through before you do them. I am hoping to talk to Dad and Judy about getting the sheep back. We'll see how that goes. But for now, I'm gonna go have lunch because it's like 5 p.m. and I haven't. I hope you enjoyed this video guys. If you appreciated it and appreciated the effort that I put into it, please give it a thumbs up. And I will see you in a few days for the next vid, which will either be the diesel heater or electrical wiring. See you then. Just one more thing. I almost forgot to mention, it is Judy's birthday on Wednesday and I don't know if I'm gonna have another video up before then. She has done so much for me and I'm so appreciative of all the help that she's given whilst I've been here and just throughout my lifetime. So please wish Judy a happy birthday and I'll be sure she gets the message and who knows, she might appear in the next episode. Okay, bye.